smoking tree so hard A million miles away Ganja is my first choice That's why I use my voice No matter what they say I'm rolling down the boulevard Smoking tree so hard A million miles away Cause ganja is my first choice That's why I use my voice No matter what they say Me said me rolling down the boulevard Smoking the best kush No Reggie Bush Blueberry kush Man I got that lean up in me cup Them call it George Bush oh, It gotta be me or mommy love the way me push We're out here once again with the Brothers Burke Park Los Angeles, California We're gonna bring you some more It is truth and understanding Through the spirit of the most high Alright today We're gonna talk about the topic Locks, or what some people call dreadlocks. And I'm gonna use the term dreadlocks because that's the term that many people know it by. Now that's a derogatory term, but that's what we're gonna use in this lesson so people can understand what we're talking about. Now I'm gonna bring some correction because there's many people, especially brothers from that UPK school and the, and the, and the different UPK branches out of Harlem, there's many brothers who speak against other brothers wearing locks, and they're falsely accusing them of sin. Now, I'm not gonna say all brothers are doing this, but there's many of them who do it. And you know, what's interesting is they, when they accuse you of this, it'll be behind, behind a, a, a lesson that you might bring out on a totally different topic. And they'll say things like, uh, Oh, uh, where's your beard? You know, why don't you have a full beard? Well, you know, I don't have a full beard because I can't grow a full beard. That's why. All right, or, or another thing. Well, well, that brother got his head covered. You know, or when they run out of things, because, you know, you totally confound them and correct them on one topic, and they'll they'll, they'll pull this one out. Well, you, why are you wearing them dirty dreadlocks? Okay? So that's what we're going to address right now. As a matter of fact, there was one brother, uh, two brothers, they tried to, they tried to, to pull this one uh, months ago when we corrected them on the law. You know, these brothers called it, and I, you know, I'm gonna say their name too, uh, the brothers from SOT, Adiala, and the other one that calls himself House. They, they got corrected on the law because there's some pork chop eating Israelites. They call themselves Israelites even though, and they eat pork and other unclean foods. So we corrected them on that and show them and prove that you must follow the laws of the Most High. And they came back out of spite and, and you know, holding the grudge instead of just accepting the correction, they came back out of spite and accused us of breaking the law because we have locks in our head. Okay, so we're gonna be correcting them on that. And when we correct, we correct out of love, but we're gonna do, do this, well, we're gonna bring forth stern correction, okay? So let's, let's get into this. Uh, oh, now, the first thing they'll do is accuse you of being a sinner because you have locks, right? Now, what, what law in, the, in Torah, what prohibitive law says that a man should not have locks? Not one, you can't find it. This is what I asked that brother, uh, Adiala, you know, and he, 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 he came back. I asked him, what law are you, are you speaking of that says I can't wear locks? He came back with uh, Isaiah chapter 3, what was it? Isaiah chapter 3, verse 22. Can you say, can you that? Isaiah 3, verse 22. level of these people when they get confounded. Isaiah chapter 3? Yeah, verse 22. Uh -huh. He took the word, he said the word crisping pen that's written in there, he said that word means hot comb. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, read. suits of apparel, and the mantles, and the wimples or charms, 
and the crisping pins, the purses, the glasses, and the fine linen, and the hoods, and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell there, shall be stink. Instead of a girdle, a rent, or okay. a tear. That's right. Mm -hmm. So he, he said that word crisping pen means hot comb. And I said, what does that have to do with anything? Second of all, the word does not mean hot, hot comb. issue of locks or dreadlocks. I'm going to I'm going to show and prove that dreadlocks are in fact scriptural. Like I said, I'm calling them dreadlocks cuz that's that's the word that, that many people understand them by. Okay? Let's get off into the law. Let's go to uh, the book of numbers. I mean, the, uh, numbers chapter 6. We're going to get into the law of the Nazarite. There's many words translated as locks in the, in the Hebrew text, and we're gonna explain these things. But I'm gonna show and prove right now from the law that locks are in fact scriptural and lawful. Okay? Uh, number six, verse two, start verse two. Numbers chapter six, verse two does read. Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when either a man or a woman consecrates an offering to take the vial of a Nazarite to separate himself to the master, he shall separate himself from Yain and from similar drink. He shall drink neither vinegar made from wine nor vinegar made from similar drink. Neither shall he drink any grape juice nor eat fresh grapes or raisins. All the days of his separation he shall eat nothing that is produced by the great vine from the seed to the skin all the days of the vow of his separation no razor shall come upon his head until the days are fulfilled for which he separated himself to the master he shall be holy then he shall let the locks of his hair or his head grow okay it said he shall let the locks of his hair or his head grow now just because it says locks does that automatically mean he's talking about uh, locks like what you have, like what I have? Just because it says locks in English? Let's get a real understanding. Let's go into the Hebrew. All right, let's 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 see what's being spoken of. Because there's many words that are uh, translated as locks in the scripture. But we're going to get into specifics of this word. Sorry, give me the definition on that. This Hebrew word, 6545, Parak, the hair as disheveled, okay? It means the hair as disheveled. Now, wh what does disheveled mean? Give me an English definition for the word disheveled so everyone can understand. To loosen and let fall in disarray. What dictionary is that from? That's from a dictionary of by far less. Okay, so to loosen, to let fall, or to be in disarray, go ahead. As in clothing, personal arts, crafts, hairdressing, and grooming especially of hair hanging loosely okay especially of hair hanging loosely all right you got more on that disheveled disordered messy ruffled rumpled bed rack where is that from what 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 uh, source is that from collins the source of the english language go ahead unkept tousled hanging loose lousy uncombed what what, what? uncombed uncombed disarranged disarrayed Browsing. 
So we can see that one of the definitions of, of disheveled is to hang loose or hair that is uncombed, all right, uh, disarray. It doesn't sound like this, this particular, these locks right here are, are being combed or are, are, are being braided, flatted, or cornrowed, right? Okay, so, but the thing is, are we just picking and choosing the definition that we want to pick? Let's get, let's get more into this law and see what's really being said. Uh, I mean, read on. What verse should we read off? Um, Numbers chapter 6, verse 6 does read. Right. All the days that he separated himself to the master, he shall not go near a dead body. He shall not make himself unclean even for his father or his mother. Back up a minute. Go, go back to um, go back to verse five. There's some more. Uh, verse I, I five does mention. read six and five. Yeah. All the days of the fire of his separation, no razor shall come upon his head until the days are fulfilled for which he separated himself to the master. He shall be holy. Then he shall let the locks of his hair, of his head grow. He shall let the locks of his hair grow. You see, now I'm gonna show you the importance of looking up every word. Um, give me the definition for that word that's translated as grow. In Strong's is the Hebrew word 1431, gadol. A primitive root properly to twist. To what? To twist. Read it again. A primitive root properly to twist. To twist. Hey, how, how, do, you get, how do you get your lock started off? Like this right here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now say, say for example, if somebody say, well, what if a Nazarite is only under a vow for 30 days? Well, we know for 30 days, he can't comb his hair, all right? And he can, and he can, you, if you have a little small amount of hair, you can twist that and you leave it disheveled. You, you, you don't comb it. You leave it in disarray, all right? We don't. Yeah, go ahead and read that. A primitive root, properly to twist. That is to be large in various senses, as in body, mind, estate, or honor, also in pride. Okay, so what what if it's, if, you know, we're saying we're picking, we're picking and choosing. Notice how that word to twist, that's the first definition they give you, said properly to twist. Yeah, but in other senses, it, it can also be translated different, uh, to grow or to be large. But in this instance, it only, it fits. It, it only makes sense to twist that hair that you're not going to comb. Okay? Um, let's let's move on. So we, we, we got that in place. Because we're going to find out what's supposed to be done with this hair. With this hair. Why does the Most High have it uh, tell us to uh, leave it disheveled? Okay, why does he do that? There's a reason behind that. And all we have to do is continue reading on in this law so we can get understanding. Go ahead. Verse 6. All the days that he separates himself to the master, he shall not go near a dead body. He shall not make himself unclean even for his father or his mother, for his brother or his sister, when they die. Because his separation to the Most High is on his head. All the, right there. Stop right there. Where does it say that? To his head. Okay, it says his separation to Elohim is on his head, right? Or in the, in the um, sometimes you'll have the word consecration. But we're going to look up that word that's translated separation or consecration. Go ahead and look that up. In Strong's, the word consecration or separation is the Hebrew word 5145, Nazar. Properly something set apart. That is dedication. It's unshorn locks. Also a chaplet. Okay, so we can see what's set apart is his hair. Read that verse again. It's his hair that's set apart, that's consecrated. All the days of the fire of his separation, no razor shall come upon his head until the days are fulfilled for which he separated himself to the master. He shall be holy. Then he shall let the locks of his hair of his head grow. All the days that he separate himself to the master, he shall not go near a dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his mother for his father, for his brother or sister, when they die, because his separation to the Most High is on his head. Okay, this separation is on his head, meaning his, his hair, that's what's consecrated, that's what's set apart, his hair. 
All right, what is it set apart for? And this, see, this is the, the, gonna be the kicker right here. But you're gonna find out why the hair is supposed to be uncombed and, and uh, unkept for the most part. Uh, jump on down to, uh, I mean, jump on down to verse 13. 13 does read. Now this is the law of the Nazarite. When the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought to the door of the tabernacle of meat. Okay, so after his the days of his separation are fulfilled, when he's done, he gets brought to the door of meeting. Go ahead. 14. And he shall present the offering to the master, one male lamb in his first year without blemish, as a burnt offering, one old lamb in his first year without blemish as a sin offering, one ram without blemish as the peace offering, a basket of unleavened bread, cakes of fine flour mixed with oil, unleavened wafers, anointed with oil. Let's address that. 
Um, your shape. You want, no, you go ahead. I um, mean, go ahead and get that for me. What is that? Uh, go to the uh, book of Judges. Is that Judges chapter 16? Judges 16. I want you to read verse 13. Judges what? Judges 16, verse 13. 16, verse 13, yeah. let's read. Delilah said to Samson, Until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me what you may be bound with. And he said to her, If you weave the seven locks of my head into the web of the loom. So she wove it tight with the pattern of the loom and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he awoke from his sleep and pulled out the pattern and then the web from the loom. Okay, so some have, have, have uh, went to this scripture and said, and looked up the definition and said, this is what Samson had, this is what locks means. Okay, now give me the definition for that word, locks, straws. Give me the word 4253, lock lofa, a ringlet of hair as gliding over each other. The definition for ground drivers and brigs, rain, lock, flat. Okay, and then what they do is they'll read that and say, see, locks, what Samson had, he had braids. But what, what you gotta remember certain things. See, it's line upon line, precept upon precept. The first thing a Nazarite must do is what we read earlier, right? He must not, uh, must not comb his hair to leave it disheveled, right? Samson was a Nazarite from the womb, right? So, by the time he married, um, Delilah, Delilah, his locks were already long. So what he did was he braided the disheveled hair into seven locks. That's easy to understand because I'm an example of that. I have locks. Right now I got like six of them. I got six of those in my hair right now. If I, if I unravel these, I'm not going to lose any hair because I don't have to comb it. I have locks. They'll hang like his. And Samson, he had his locks for years. And so his long locks were braided into seven braids, but it's translated locks. And that's where the confusion comes in because you think that locks are, are cornrows. But we already proven from the law that you can't have cornrows and still consecrate your hair to the most high because you're gonna lose that hair when you comb it to rebraid it. It's that simple. Okay, so we can see Samson, he already had locks since, the child, since he was a baby. When he got older, his hair was then braided into seven, what they call locks, but the Hebrew word is what? Maklapa. Maklapa. Okay, the, the, the other word, that the Nazarite has is translated as para, and that's disheveled. So Samson took his para and got it braided into my, what is it? My my All right, that's that's how that works. So that should be cleared up right there. Locks are not cornrows. As a matter of fact, some have said, uh, well, well, you 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 guys have you have dreadlocks, you follow an African custom. You follow ancient African customs. Like, here's the thing. You know the ancient Africans also had uh, afros, they also had low cuts, and they also had cornrows. There's even uh, images of Egyptians with, with braids. All right, let's get a let's get a source on the history of cornrows amongst the Africans. It's from Willie F. Page, the 2001 edition Encyclopedia of African History and Culture, Ancient Africa, Prehistorics of 500 CE, Volume One, Facts on File, page 36. All right, read. A traditional way of styling hair across the African continent, depictions of women with cornrows have been found in Stone Age paintings in the Tassili. Tassili 
plateau of the Sahara that have been dated as far back as 3000 BC. You hear that? So you have ancient Africans as far back as 3000 BC. There's artifacts of this. Ancient Africans having corn rolls. So don't just say that uh, having locks of the African custom. If you're going to say that, then you, you're going to have to say having corn rolls is an ancient African custom as well. See, that that's where you get caught up. If you try to accuse people of stuff, with, uh, you know, without having any law to back you up, you just start making up things. Oh, that's a whole Hamite custom. That's an African custom. You know, just like, uh, okay, uh, there's all kinds of uh, customs. Or, or they'll say something like, um, you, the law says you shouldn't follow the customs of the nations. It's talking about abominable customs in that law. Now, a hairstyle, as far as cornrows or locks, that's not an abominable custom. Okay? Uh, a woman nursing her, her child. The ancient Africans did that too. That was a custom. Israelites did that also. Uh, people getting up to go to work in the morning. People going to sleep at night. Those are, those are customs of the nation as well, but they're not abominable customs. So don't try to use that law. All right? Because you don't understand it. Okay, now let's let's move on to uh, some other, we're going to get some other definitions on, uh, on the word translated locks and give you an example of those. Uh, let's go down to uh, Song of Solomon. I mean, let's get uh, Psalms chapter 4, verse 1. Psalms chapter 4, verse 1. this now what we're doing is going to bring understanding on the other words that are translated lock so for and everyone can understand these things verse one song of solomon chapter four verse one does read behold you are fair my love behold you are fair you have dog's eyes behind your veil your hair is like a flock of goats going down from the mount galilee your teeth are like a flock of shorn sheep which have come up for the weight for the wa washing every one of which bears twins That's and, fine. and none is bearing among them. That's fine. I noticed that the scripture you're reading from had already translated it uh, correctly because in um, in Song of Solomon that word veil is translated locks in the King James. I'm just going to read it real quick out of mind. I thought you had King James on it. Yeah, this uh, the do. Okay. So they, they made some corrections. It says, Be, Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove's eyes within thy locks. Thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Mount Gilead. Now that word translated locks is the word, it means veil. In, in, in his new King James, it was corrected to, to bring uh, clarity. Give him a strong definition. It's the Hebrew word 6777, Sama, meaning to fasten on a veil. Right. Okay, so that word doesn't even mean hair. That word means veil. All right, and then inside that, that scripture, it talked about her hair. So it's not going to mention hair twice, but it's saying a, a, a veil that goes over her hair. All right, and that same word was used also in Psalms chapter 6, verse 7, Isaiah 47, verse 2. And that's it. So that word, and that word really means veil, but in your King James, it's going to say locks. But it doesn't even mean hair. It means veil. Okay, let's, let's go on to another one. Uh, I mean, it's Song of Solomon chapter 5. And verse 2. Song of Solomon 5 and verse 2. Verse 2 and 5, 5 and 2 does read. I sleep, but my heart is awake. It is the voice of my beloved. He knocks, saying, Open for me, my sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. For my head is covered with you, my locks, with the drops of the night. Okay, it says, My locks drops of the night. Now these particular locks, what, what do these mean? Okay, let's get the definition on that. Strong's Hebrew word 6977. Kabutsa. 
its original sense of forelock as shorn. Okay, this is a forelock, meaning the lock of hair as shorn, meaning cut or trimmed. And so, so these, these are, this is a short, short hair. All right, now what else does it say in there? Uh, oh, let's go down to verse 11. Is that, that same definition? Read verse 11. His head is like the finest gold. His locks were weighed and black as a raven. Okay, now the King James says his locks are bushy, as black as a raven. But if you have short hair and it's wavy or bushy, that could be that that could be like like what you have. See, that's not even talking about about uh, so-called dreadlocks. Oh. All right, right. That's short hair, short hair. That's wavy or bushy, meaning like like what you have, you what you have. Okay, that's not talking about braids or or locks. All right. See, we're just trying to bring understanding on this topic. And we're covering every word. Oh, real quick, let's uh, go to uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter, chapter 44. We're gonna uh, read the last, the last verse that has the word locks in it. Ezekiel chapter 44. Ezekiel 44, verse 20. 44 and 20 does read. They shall neither shave their heads, nor let their hair grow long, but they shall keep their hair well trimmed. No priest shall drink yaim when he enters the inner court. They shall not take as a wife a widow or a divorced woman, but take virgins of the descendants of the house of Israel or widows of priests. Okay, so in this, this word, in this uh, verse, the word that's translated locks is the same one that was used in the Nazarite vow. Okay? <coughs> it's the disheveled hair. Now read the first part of that again. Because you're going to see the priest, it says they need to shave their head or let their locks grow long. Go to that uh, 44 right? verse 20. They shall neither shave their heads nor let their hair grow long. But they shall keep their hair well trimmed. Okay, that means the priests, they won't go under a Nazarite vow. Because if you're under a Nazarite vow, you're gonna let the hair grow long, and when, you, when your vow's up, you're gonna shave the head. It says the priests won't do that, okay? See, the, the Nazarites, many of them came out of the, uh, the secular population of Israel, like Samson, he was the tribe of Dan. But a priest could also be under a Nazarite vow as well. But in the kingdom, in this prophecy, said the priests, they won't have to un undergo that consecration. You know why? Because they're already consecrated to the whole time. All right, this priesthood that's set up is going to be perfect. Go on down to um, uh, verse 28. Ezekiel 44, verse 28. It's going to explain it. Thus reads, It shall be in regard to their inheritance that I am their inheritance. You shall give them no possessions in Israel. For I am their possession. See? 29. Bird or beast. We can stop there. The point was in, in verse 28, though. The, the inheritance uh, is, is the most high. They're already consecrated to the most high. They won't undergo any Nazarite vows. So that's why it says they will neither shave their head, head or they won't have to let their hair, their disheveled hair grow long like a Nazarite would. These priests won't do that. Okay? And those, so those are all the words that have been translated as locks. You can see from the, the law of the Nazarite clearly that locks are scriptural. What you call dreadlocks, those are scriptural. Because the only way that a person can consecrate all of his hair to the Most High without losing any hair until he shaves his head and offers it, the only way he can do that is by locking his hair up. Because it's locked. You know, and some of you say, oh, all those locks are dirty and all dirty and nasty. From the most people, brothers I know, and even secular people who I know who have locks, they take uh, uh, they take extra time to, to uh, maintain their hair, to keep it clean, to keep the scalp moisturized and, and looked after. You know, don't don't you don't you take care of your hair? Yes, I do. We're not dirty people. We're clean. We, we, we live by the clean and unclean laws. We 
focused on being clean. Our hair gets washed and groomed uh, uh, on a regular basis. You know, and once one brother, one guy, he, he even accused us of having salon locks, whatever that's supposed to be. You know, as if, as if they don't go to a salon or a barber to get their hair maintained. You know, yeah, we have people do our hair. We don't do it ourselves, and we don't have it. We don't, uh, we don't, I don't preform. <coughs> There's different type of locks you can have. You can twist your hair, you, you can freeform, you know, They're like like Bob Marley. That's a different style of, of locks, okay? Whatever floats your boat, as long as a person's uh, hair is kept and it's clean. Okay, since this man mentioned that we don't, um, that we have dirty dreads in our head, unclean dreads, um, we first of all, we don't call them dreads to begin with, they're locks. And uh, now just to show how much of a liar he is and how ignorant he is, I'm going to just walk you through. This is one of my um, so-called medicine cabinets, and this is the type of products that, that uh, we put on our head. Uh, and you'll see they're all natural. This is 99% uh, pure aloe vera. This is aloe vera gel. Um, you know, this is great for the scalp. This is what, what we put on our hair. This is a sea salt. This is a sea salt spray. And this uh, basically consists of uh, sea salt, water, and essential oils. Uh, this is another sea salt spray. Okay, uh, this is peppermint, that's just pretty much an air freshener, using uh, natural peppermint oil. And here's a uh, jojoba oil, All right. and that's just a moisturizer. And down here, you see, we have a lot of essential oils, that's pretty, we're um, very much in aromatherapy, um, orange oil. Uh, lavender oil that's great for the hair and scalp uh, not all of these oils we use on our hair um, it's grapefruit oil citronella this is thyme uh, cedarwood another oil that's great for the scalp and this is a uh, insect bite sting and as for insect bites and whatnot and this is a natural uh, yeah, instead of using cologne, we don't use it cologne because of the chemicals. Um, this is a frankincense and myrrh spray, and it uses all natural ingredients. Okay, and uh, and I, we don't put I don't put this on my hair every day, you know. But uh, we also use olive oil, um, extra virgin olive oil, and that's pretty much it when it comes to uh, hair products. Um, oh. I almost forgot. Because uh, we, I don't really use shampoo, or the shampoos we use don't have chemicals in it, uh, or, or harmful toxic chemicals like propylene glycol and sodium lauryl sulfate. Um, we we don't really shampoo our hair that much. We we use rinses. Um, this here is a uh, this is a rosemary, um, organic rosemary, and. Uh, what we do is we'll take this and boil it in water and just uh, pour that over our hair. Rosemary has, is great for the hair and scalp. It uh, just all you have to do is look look it up, research this stuff. And um, here's another one that we use. This is organic sage. We can you know we basically make a tea out of it, and uh, we'll use an organic peppermint tea and just mix that in. And uh, that, uh, you know, you just pour that, rinse that, uh, we, we uh, pour that over our hair, and uh, it's basically a rinse. The only time we'll shampoo, or at least the only time I shampoo, is uh, usually, uh, you know, if, if i am been around a lot of dust or something, uh, my hair is actually dirty, but my hair really doesn't get dirty. And, and, uh, and when I do shampoo, uh, we we'll use a shampoo that doesn't contain harmful ingredients such as uh, 
propylene glycol and so sodium lauryl sulfate. As a matter of fact, let me let me get one of the shampoos that I use sometimes. Okay, this here is uh it's called Refresh. This is a citrus shampoo with vitamin C. And um it says it has our choice are you with our unique aromatherapeutic blend of orange blossoms and grapefruit. This doesn't have any harmful chemicals in it. You know, it's none of that stuff that you'll you'll find in most uh grocery stores or beauty supply stores and whatnot. It's all natural ingredients. Let's see if I can focus in on this. Okay, let's look at these ingredients. Botanical water, extracts of chamomile, ginger, ginseng, echinacea, comfrey, lemongrass, and sage, sodium, um, C14, 16. Uh, some of these you can't really pronounce, but they're not uh, harmful. Like like the, uh, uh, you, you'll notice that you can, you'll see uh, the jojoba oil, the essential oil, sweet orange, um, you know, you can see the vitamins in there. These essential oils of grapefruit and tangerine. And these other words, the ones that are hard to pronounce, like at the bottom, the methylparaben and the propylparaben. All these things have been researched and uh, we haven't, we found that there's, there's no uh, harmful chemicals. All right. See, no animal testing, no animal products. 100% biodegradable, so we know there's, there's no pork, no unclean ingredients and stuff like that in here. And uh, this is just an example of how we take care of our hair. You know, this is a, we follow a holistic lifestyle. We've been doing this, uh, I've been doing it ever since the Most High has woke me up to the, to his truth. All right, and uh, oh, the man also lied and said that we, we shave. Like we don't have beards. Well, first of all, I can't grow a full beard like uh, ZZ Top, all right? But the law doesn't uh, require a person to grow a beard. We're commanded not to shave, all right? And 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 that law, it, there's more uh, on it. It's, it's more complex than what a person thinks, but we do trim. You're allowed to trim the hair that grows on your face. And here's just a, uh, so I don't, I don't use razors. I haven't shaved my face since what 96 and that's when the most high first woke me up this is just a nose um, trimmer to get rid of the nose hairs and then this is a little uh, you know just little clippers kind of uh, trim your mustache and um, use this to trim your beard or the the hair that I do have growing on my face you know I use use this but uh, to say that we don't have beards or we shave as if we're um, kind of alluding to that we're not keeping the law, that's a flat out lie. Okay, that just comes from a man talking. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about and he's bitter. All right, so there's the proof right there. And as far as our hair being dirty, you can see um, I think we take better care of our hair than uh, most other people. You know, without being metrosexual, you can see we do take care of our, our hair. And uh, it's just all about being clean. And uh, so that's it on that. Oh, by the way, let's real since we're on this topic, even our deodorants. We don't use the regular deodorant that they sell in the store that where um, they contain aluminum and stuff like that, things that are harming your body. Notice what we use. It's all natural protection, crystal essence. It's a mineral deodorant roll-on. It has lavender and white tea, paraben-free, hypoallergenic. And basically all it is is, is a, uh, some essential oils mixed in with a, uh, it's a certain salt. It's actually a, uh, a salt stone, a mineral that uh, this deodorant is made up of. And notice what it says. No aluminum Chloral hydrate. See? Here's another one. It's a spray. It's the same thing. It's made of the same uh, ingredients. No aluminum chloral hydrate. 
all right so we don't we don't uh, put all kinds of toxic chemicals on our bodies or on our hair uh, let's get on over to this look at the toothpaste so it's Tom's of Maine so this is a popular brand that uh, a lot of people should know about but you'll notice how it's fluoride free natural and this is a peppermint uh, flavor Okay. Look what's in here. Alright, see? You won't find any garbage. You'll see essential oils and natural ingredients in there. And this sodium laurel sulfate comes from a a uh, plant based source. This isn't a toxic uh, sodium laurel sulfate. So we check with the company. Um, you'll notice no artificial colors, flavors, fragrance, or preservative. Um, no animal testing or animal ingredients. So we make sure, you know, we stay kosher. Everything's clean on the up and up. That's how we live. And, you know, for somebody to imply that we're dirty and filthy, they're just doing that out of spite and malice because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. All right, so this we just proved that this man, Adiala, the foolish glutton, is a, a liar. Not only is he an idiot, but he's a straight up liar. You know, but hey, that's pretty much what I had. I wanted to bring understanding to that topic because I've, I've heard uh, it's, a, it's a controversial topic. I heard a lot of these, these guys from these UPK schools or, and, and these UPK branches not all, but I heard a lot of them condemn locks and they have no scriptural basis for doing it. All right? And I just wanted to bring understanding on this topic and uh, it's for edification for other brothers who might have locks and because and, uh, I get a lot of questions on, on this and, and uh, they might ask me, am I breaking the law by having locks? If, you know, and people want to know, where can I find a justification for locks in the scriptures? Well, you, you just receive that justification through the spirit of the Most High. Well, actually, uh, if we can go to that one scripture, I think it's in Corinthians, uh, because I was just posed this question today. I mean, it was concerning growing your beard, growing your hair long, stuff like that. Uh, where is that at again? I think it's uh, 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. That's, that's exactly where it is. We should do a whole lesson on this. Yeah, we actually should. We, this is coming. And before you read that, I want to remind you guys out there that you can't just reopen up the King James and, and read it and think you're going to get understanding. You you really got to put time into this and not only use line upon line, but you, you have to you have to understand the words that you read. And you, you also need to understand Torah. Because many of you, if you would have understood the law regarding the Nazarite, you would know that a Nazarite can't lose any hairs. A Nazarite has to save all his hair because it's consecrated to the Most High. And then it would this would make sense to you. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go to, um, I'm just going to get straight to the um, point. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 14. When y'all get that for me. Okay. 11, verse 14. Start there. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 14. Thus read. Uh -huh. Does not even nature itself teach that if a man has long hair, it is a dishonor to him? Now, question. What they do is they use this particular scripture without translating properly. Mm -hmm. In this one, we can see in the Strong's, I can't recall the number right off, right off hand, but it's talking about tresses of hair, curls of hair, hair like a woman's hair. Yeah, styling it like a exactly. woman. Exactly. Continue. But if a woman has long hair, it is a glory to her. Uh -huh. For her hair is given to her for a covering. Go ahead. But if anyone seems to be contentious, uh -huh. we have no such custom. Uh -huh. Nor do the churches of the Most High God. All right, so we have it there. See, what they fail to realize, or what they fail to point out after they try to put this scripture on you. Yeah. They failed to read verse 16. Right. 
And then they totally yeah. disregard the law in that right where uh -huh. it says you gotta let your hair grow. Uh -huh. You know, <laughs> it, it, the scriptures don't contradict themselves. It's just people don't have understanding on the scriptures. Uh -huh. All right, all you gotta, we'll put the definition of, of uh, the meaning of, of uh, uh, here. Uh, we're gonna put that definition up as well. Because men, men, men should not walking around with their hair styled like a woman. And that's that's what's, what's being taught right there. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then also a whole lot of us, um, a brother of mine says this a lot. Um, a lot of us also overreact to the traditions of men, just like the Pharisees in that day. It was like, why are your disciples walking around I and mean, eating without washed hands? Right. He, and Messiah said, why are you transgressing the law with your tradition? Right. You know, so a lot of us, we mistake. Uh -huh. A lot of us make the mistake of using these traditions that we just spoke of and other traditions, you know, for law. And transgression of the actual law. So that's all I got on that. One. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, hey, that's pretty much it. And uh, Shabbat's almost over. Getting dark. But uh, hey, we just wanted to bring this truth out for edification, and understanding, and uh, may the Most High bless you in your understanding. And may those of you who scoff and and uh, preach ignorance. May you take heed to this lesson and repent and uh, take this correction and, uh, and move forward. Smoking trees so hard, a million miles away. Ganja is my first choice, that's why I use my voice, no matter what they say. I'm rolling down the boulevard, smoking weed so hard. I love my urban medicine, that's why I set the trend, and I just don't play. Now I come again with love to smoke the cannabis. Don't diss, just get with this. I am the young OG, keep flowing through, no matter what they do. Hey, they just can't stop me. Well, light the fire light, burn the sodomite, yo, ignite the dynamite. Look into my eyes again. I set the trend for the youth, them. Don't try to diss the cannabis. Boom! Rolling down the boulevard. Blazing 